So, honeymoon short-lived. We had some unexpected bad news, the sort of news you dread. Um, but put it in perspective, we're all healthy and well, so yeah, that's good. Tick. It's nothing to do with the foundations. Thankfully, the ground survey showed that the foundations are solid. So if we want to extend for a self-build, which we will want to do, then it's solid. And so that's good. Tick. And also electricity, another plus. It's not connected at the moment, but it has been in the past. So there's infrastructure there and there's a, a post uh, bringing the electricity in close to the house. So that's good. But the problem relates to the septic tank. Looking into that uh, opened up a problem that we weren't expecting. So I'm just showing you the plan here of the land that we own. I've marked the house and garage there. And then you can see this little strip to the left uh, is the designated septic tank area. They threw that little strip of land in extra. Imagine just doing that. You probably fit to put two houses on there. Um, but that's where the septic tank will be. And we've just marked it here in the yellow square. Um, it needs to be the percolation area. So the land needs to drain away really well. But unfortunately, it's long grass, marshy, bog land. This is Noel talking to Michael, our structural engineer, and Dennis, the land surveyor, giving the bad news that as it is, it probably won't pass planning regulations for the septic tank. But Dennis had a solution and suggested that if we dig out an area and bring in some gravel, to put down at the bottom and then put topsoil back on top. We're improving the quality of the ground, the land, so that it is more permeable and it will pass the test when they come along from the council, send someone with like a, I don't know, they stick a rod down there to test its, measure its, um, the moisture, you know, the level of moisture and drain away. It will pass because what you don't want to be left with is a swamp where it's just stagnant and you know i mean that's just not healthy anyway and it would smell and it would be awful but it just wouldn't pass for um, environmental health standards so that's not the nightmare bad thing by the way it, it was uh yeah an extra expense we had to get i think four three or four lorry loads of gravel brought i think it was three loads of gravel bought in but it was really what happened when they tried to do that that we weren't expecting. So on the day that the work was scheduled, we thought we'd call in just to see how they were getting on. And when we arrived, we saw this group of people all hanging around by the gate and there was a tractor. We thought, what's a tractor doing there? Who are these people? Then we saw this lorry kind of on a tilt, like, fallen into the ditch. The driver was blaming the road, blaming that it wasn't wide enough and then complaining about the land, saying it's all rubbish land anyway, all of this round here, pointing to the trees and calling them all this shit, he said. Describing the trees and the forest as shit, which actually made me think I'm not taking seriously anything that you, you say. Apparently it holds all the water and never get dry. I'm actually glad to hear that in a time of global warming and we're living in a place where there are lots of trees that hold moisture in the land. I think that's quite a good thing. We were watching as they were trying to get this lorry out. The more the wheels were turning, the more it was churning up the road. It was just disappearing, like dissolving, disintegrating in front of our eyes. And we're like, what's happened to our road? It's not really a road, it's just mud. It's just like a field. I think they eventually got it out by another lorry of the same size coming out from the haulage company and towing it out. But from then on, they had to deliver the load using little dumper trucks to decant from the large lorry into their little smaller trucks and take it down to where it needed to be. But it made us realise that that road just was not fit for purpose. And if we had plans as we did to uh, extend the house and do any structural work there, 
we we just wouldn't be able to get cement trucks down there wouldn't be able to take the work the weight so something had to be done to repair the road and if you think about the cost of getting a new drive built and then you times that by six because that road that driveway is about a quarter of a kilometer we measured it then you begin to see why it becomes a bit scary and we just haven't budgeted for that if anything it had the potential to swallow up the whole of our build budget So we didn't get much sleep that night. We knew that we needed to try and get in touch with the Forestry Commission, who we thought owned the land. If you look at this map, you can see that yellow line there. Our land doesn't begin. Um, We don't own the road. The solicitor explained it to us, but he did say it was the Forestry Commission that were then responsible for managing and maintaining, rather, that road. So we thought, okay, we'll need to get in touch with the Forestry Commission and we found out who they were, found out who the uh, regional manager was and wrote to him. Apparently he was away on holiday, so we were waiting about two weeks. In that time, I had to return to the UK. Noel stayed behind and uh, waited to to hear back because we were just in limbo a little bit. If the Forestry Commission didn't own it, who then owns this road? And how are we going to get it fixed? Dennis thought we'd have some better rock in our own field. And he suggested opening up the field to the left here, this one here that I'm showing you now. All of that is our land. So we said, yeah, go on then. He got all of the um, equipment in, got the diggers in. And sure enough, they found a seam of rock that they could use as hardcore for the road. So work began and they dug down. They needed to go down about three foot to give it a really firm foundation. And then they covered it all over with hardcore, our own hardcore. Thankfully, I can't imagine what the bill would have been, what it would have cost had we had we had to buy in hardcore and transport it you know it just doesn't bear thinking about so what we were paying for in the end was the labor and the equipment you know the machinery Uh, there were I think three or four of them working and they worked from like half past five six o'clock in the morning to like ten o'clock at night they worked so hard to complete this road in two weeks which is really what all that Noel had left before he had to leave and they did it and it was amazing they they um laid all the hardcore the full length they widened the road in fact which was great so that yeah we wouldn't have a similar problem when we had to bring in the trucks the road would be plenty wide enough and they also then put a membrane down and finally they topped it all off with the limestone so we did have to buy that in that was an extra cost but just to sort of tidy it up and make it look nice and uh, there we go we had a road for a fraction of the cost that we expected it might be it was still a lot of money i am going to make a video one time with all of our costings in and um, i'm sure you want to know that and we can do you know we'll probably do a few actually one midpoint and then one at the end of the project but uh, it, it was okay it was okay so this year now i'm in 2023 This was about a year ago that this happened. I'm making this video retrospectively. And uh, I haven't seen it yet. We're going out literally in about five days time. I will see this road for the first time. I've only seen photos. These photos here that you're seeing now at the time of of recording this. We haven't done, not, not much has been done for the rest of this year on the project because largely we've been just filling the pot, you know, replenishing the budget really. Um, working hard to to get back to where we were before that unexpected expense. It's all good, all's well that ends well and we've got a lovely new road.
and it's brilliant. I'm sure there'll be more unexpected uh, yeah, blips, bumps in the road. <laughs> and it's a it's a long and winding road. Yeah, it's not actually it's quite a straight road, but it certainly was long and it's quite expensive. But now it's done, it'll be it'll be there forever. It'll last us certainly our lifetime anyway.